Hi all, let's uh, see about the body cavity that are opened during in the postmortem examination. So, what are the body cavities that are opened? So, generally in all the body cavity, in all the examination, okay, in all the postmortem examination, so generally, generally in all the postmortem examination, we are going to remove the thoracic cavity first, okay, only in special cases like this. So, we are going to remove special organs. So, first I will go for a uh, newborn. In newborn, I am going to open abdomen. Why? Because I want to see the diaphragm. Okay. By looking at the diaphragm, I can tell whether it is uh, stillborn or, uh, you know, you know, live death or a still death, I can see it. So, uh, I am going to go for abdomen to see the diaphragm. Okay. And then, uh, mainly why abdomen is, I am, I can see the position of diaphragm. Okay, so by the position of diaphragm, I can tell whether the baby is, you know, still death or live death, I can tell. And the next one is poisoning. In case of poisoning, the body cavity you should open is cranium. Okay, in traumatic head injury, what, what do you open in traumatic head injury? Obviously, it is head. In asphyxia, okay, in asphyxia, uh, the neck part we are going to remove last. So, for, first is cranium. Okay, and then thorax and then abdomen. Lastly, we are going to remove the neck. So, why do we remove the neck last is, so I do not want to cause any bleeding when I open first. Uh, if I see more bleeding in that area, I cannot uh, see the findings clearly. Okay, uh, that's it. So, let's uh, go to air embolism and pulmonary embolism. So, in case of air embolism and pulmonary embolism, so you can have pneumothorax. Or air embolism and pulmonary embolism. Okay, so what I do first is first I'll take the sample. Okay, I'll open the chest cavity. I will open the chest cavity, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a skin flap and I'm going to preserve a sample. Okay, and then I am going to puncture pleura. Okay, when I puncture pleura, if okay, if I puncture the pleura and a bubble comes out. comes out okay when i puncture the pleura and if the you know i keep a glass of water okay i keep the glass of water uh, while you know piercing the pleura so when i open the pleura when some bubble comes out in, in the water i keep keep it near that then it suggests that the pleura is going to have air so that is pneumothorax so if i in the air embolism okay in the air embolism or in the pulmonary embolism uh, if I fill the uh, water cavity, okay, if I fill the water cavity with the uh, uh, pericardial, I mean, if I fill the pericardium with water, okay, you have to fill the pericardium with water, okay, you fill the pericardium with water and then you see, uh, you puncture the ventricle. If you, if, if you see the bubble in the pericardium, it suggests that it is air embolism. So, you puncture the pleura, okay, keep a glass of or a bowl of water outside the pleura. You puncture the pleura and if you see air bubbles entering into the glass of water, it is known as uh, pulmonary pneumothorax. Okay, but if I fill the pericardial area with water, okay, now I am puncturing the ventricle. If I see a bubble in the pericardial cavity filled with water, then it is going to be air embolism or pulmonary embolism. Okay, so that's it. So, if in any postmortem, you should uh, dissect the following organs. Okay. So, you should have the basic thing because when you are posted in any peripheral uh, areas, you should know, okay, what you are dealing with, okay. If you are dealing with brain, okay, sorry, the first, uh, these are the organs you should remove, okay. So, if you take brain, you please uh, fixate the brain with 10% uh, formalin, okay, and heart. So, how do you, you know, want to postmortem the heart? First, you go from right atrium to right ventricle to left atrium to left ventricle okay in case of spinal cord you can remove it anteriorly or you can remove it posteriorly your choice but posterior is you know better technique okay in case of stomach okay stomach i always tell you should uh, pierce the greater curvature you should start you know you should uh, start from the greater curvature you first open the greater curvature because in all the acid poisoning, okay, or in the corrosive poisoning, okay, your lesser curvature is the one which is most affected. So, if you, you know, uh, start the incision from the uh, lesser curvature, it is going to, you know, evidence is going to be false. 
okay that's why okay next we'll go to another important topic it is nothing but exhumation okay exhumation it is nothing bad so in netflix uh recently a series was added it is uh, you know um curry and cyanide so what does it tell us uh the jolly joseph the lady she murdered six people in her family and in the time span of 14 years so nobody knew until uh the deceased sister okay one of the deceased sister she found out the postmortem report of her brother who was killed by jolly joseph and there was some you know uh, uh doubts she had and then she filed a filed a complaint again so uh, the police who investigated that case you know uh, uh, got an order from court and they dig out the bodies you know uh, after many years okay they dig out the mother's body and the father's body which has been killed 14 years before and this permission okay will be given by this request okay to do exhumation is will given by police or magistrate to the forensic medicine expert okay and then with the request of them in the presence of police and in the presence of doctor the exhumation should be done okay so uh, another important thing is the section is very important 176 3 crpc so you should also know uh, the cops uh, which is present in the soil okay uh, it could be if uh, the soil as arsenic present okay this arsenic can go into the body of the deceased and it can cause post mortem imbibition okay and it can you know uh, interfere with the evidence okay so what arsenic in the body arsenic sorry arsenic in soil you where you dig the you know cops there will be arsenic in the soil okay and this arsenic in the soil can enter into the deceased body okay and it can cause post mortem imbibition okay so what i'm going to do is whenever i take the sample okay whenever i am uh, taking the sample uh, what i'm going to do is i am going to whenever i uh, take the sample i am what i'm going to do is this is you know body okay where the soil is present and this is soil which is away from the body okay i am going to take the sample from both okay i am going to take the sample where the deceased was uh, you know kept okay i am going to take soil from that area and i am going to take a soil from the normal area where the deceased is not kept okay so i am going to see whether there is arsenic contamination in that area okay if the arsenic contamination is present all the bodies that have been kept in the in that particular area it is going to show post mortem inhibition so to prevent that i am going to test the samples okay i am going to take sample from the body uh, uh, of the corpse okay where the soil is uh, arsenic is present and then i am going to take the normal area okay so i am going to see the difference okay so that is known as exhumation so let's talk about mcnaughton's rule so mcnaughton's rule is also very important so what does mcnaughton's rule says the implemented it is implemented in 1843 which i know you will never remember you should know the uh, other names it is right or wrong test right or wrong test or it is legal test so what is it basically means that see if the accused okay if the accused okay if the accused at the time of committing crime okay if he is at the at the time of uh, you know committing the crime okay if at the time of committing crime he is uh, you know mentally unsound not mentally unsound he is suffering from such a defect of reason like abnormality of mind so i'll tell it in i will tell it in simple words okay if the accused okay if he at the time of committing crime okay he has abnormal abnormality of mind okay he is not knowing whether he is doing right or wrong okay okay he doesn't know okay 
and he doesn't know what is the quality of act he is doing okay uh, okay if an accused for example um, postpartum depression okay many females have been suffering from postpartum depression okay in india still in villages you know uh, postpartum depression the awareness is very less okay i have seen a case recently in tamil nadu uh, so what happened is this postpartum mother okay postpartum mother she you know uh, try to kill the baby okay we have studied in psychiatry like uh, the postpartum uh, depression is having so many stages the f- first one is postpartum blues and postpartum uh, depression postpartum psychic so uh, she was so aggressive that she tried to kill her own fa- own baby okay it's not new cases in north india so many cases have been reported so what actually uh, uh, tamil nadu did was in tamil nadu in, in the news they didn't actually you know uh, tell about the postpartum depression they constantly keep blaming that lady okay only if you are a doctor and uh, if you are a ogician you know you will come to know about postpartum depression or if you are a psychiatrist or anybody in the medical field knows about so the normal people doesn't know they they kept on blaming the girl okay so that is the thing so if the accused at the time of committing crime it could be anything okay if they are psych- suffering from any psychosis or you know schizophrenic patient you know dementia patient alzheimer patient if they don't have any abnormality of mind okay they don't know whether they are doing right or wrong okay that patient sorry that accused is not responsible is not legally responsible for crime okay so that is known as mcnaughton's rule uh, please remember it is 84 ipc it is very 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 important question okay let's go to uh, postmortem okay 